and declare <laughs> we all Oh, uh, so many pause. Sound like I was moaning or some shit. All right, sup though. I remember my college days. Shouts out to anybody that's in college right now. How you doing? You passing? Or you partying? Or you partying and passing? You hoeing around? Or you keeping the faithful? What you doing? I was a junior at George Mason University of Virginia in 2022. George! I've since graduated last spring with a degree in musical theater. Oh! I said it. Come on with it. Come on, musical theater. I think my 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 major was performing arts. Um, yeah. Yeah. I did a lot of things in the arts, but I didn't do um, theater, though. I've been acting professionally for like six or seven years. So I kind of wish I did theater in college though, but you know, teach is on. The year because of credit issues. Between 2021 and 2024, I worked as an RA to keep myself productive. I enjoyed my job at times because I would throw events as RAs could do that. And I would also talk to other residents who lived in the dorms. Other times, I would enjoy it, specifically this one time. The 2022 spring semester was coming right up, and I moved in a day earlier because I was told to. The next day then came, and people are moving in. It was a busy day, and I was tired of walking around, helping people move in, and I barely got to sit down. Around 3 o'clock in the afternoon, a kid named Brandon arrived and was ready to move in. I introduced myself, checked him in, and he was all settled in. Something about him made me feel a little off. He seemed very socially awkward. I assumed he was somewhat on the spectrum, but that didn't really bother me. I didn't worry about too much and just helped everyone else move in for the rest of the day. It was now March and I was having a pretty great semester to say the least. I got a part that I wanted, that I auditioned for, made a lot of new friends and more importantly, I was getting good grades. We would rehearse every day, and one day, a band joined the rehearsals. Once they came, I saw who everyone in the band was. One face I recognized in that band, and it was Brandon, a guy who dormed in the building that I worked in. He was the drummer for the band. When we were rehearsing together, he would continuously stare at me. I felt really uneasy, but I would- Yeah, that's, that's, that's a sight to see. Can you imagine? A, can you imagine a drummer just staring at you like, pretend that I didn't notice that he stared at me. I figured that he must have a crush on me or something. So all of us were together for what I would say was like a month, a month and a half. And then we had our show and that was that. I was so happy that we had finally finished that play for two reasons. One, we worked our asses off and now we had free time. Two, that boy Brandon, he wouldn't have to stare at me anymore. I would still have to see him because he stayed in the same building as me while working as an RA. It was now late April, and there were like two weeks left of school. Nothing happened for the next week, but the week later, something happened that never in a million years that I thought would ever happen to me. On a Thursday night, it was my turn to work as the RA. Nothing happened for an hour. Everything was chill. I was on my phone scrolling through Instagram. All of a sudden, I heard footsteps approaching me. When I turned my head, I saw pure horror. Oh. Right in front of me was Brandon. This time, he was completely naked, and worst of all, he was smiling at me. What would you do? What would y'all do? You turned around, and you just saw somebody naked right in front of you. What would you do? Oh, nah. Honestly, I don't know. I don't know. I couldn't believe what my eyes were seeing. I then was sending blow up texts to all of my friends in a group chat about what was going on. As I was doing this, I then heard another pair of footsteps. 
It was his roommate, Steven. He was running and he begged for me not to call the resident hall director. I said okay and I saw him literally pulling and dragging Brandon to their room and then went out of view. I was still processing what was going on. I then decided that I would take a short walk to clear my brain. I listened to Steven and I didn't call the resident hall director. Saturday then came and Brandon moved out that day. I had to act normal for my job. I saw his dad come to help him move out and I helped him as well. Although I didn't tell my boss what he did, I did tell his dad. I expected him to completely lose it on Brandon, but he quite frankly did the complete opposite. He assured me that he just has autism and that he isn't harmful. So I would have been like, you told me that? He has all, he's autistic? Okay, I would have been like, oh, okay, that makes sense. Cause that would make sense because of that and that, and he did that. He get that shit from you! You cook ass! I back the hell up. Using autism as an excuse for what he did is unacceptable. Most autistic people would not do that, as far as my knowledge. Unless you have severe autism. The only thing I could think of was that he had an episode. I then checked Brandon out and he and his father left. I now felt peace as they were gone. I told a few friends what had happened. And they told me something even more devastating. He's not autistic. A formal dance took place two weeks ago, and I didn't end up going. At the formal, Brandon apparently took pictures under numerous girls' skirts, which included some of my friends. No girl knew about this until this one guy told this to every girl who fell victim. I was so disgusted to hear this. I never saw Brandon again after this. He either left the school or he moved to another campus. The scene of him keeps replaying in my head every day, and I had to immediately see a therapist after this. I was definitely traumatized. I was pretty relieved that I didn't see him again, and I want to keep it that way. I don't think he's autistic, but even if he wasn't, I mean, even if he is, I don't think that's an excuse. There's no excuses to be a clock ass. 20 years ago today, something so traumatizing happened. 20 years, 20 years ago today? You couldn't say that shit any sooner? It made me want to end my own life. And I'll tell you why. I was a freshman at San Diego State University, and I was already having a blast. I would go to countless parties and would sometimes get blacked out drunk. I would love That's to so scary. That is so scary. I can't do that. I can't get that drunk. And I don't know who I'm with 100%. Like, it's, it's one thing to get tipsy. It's one thing to get, like, a little loose. It's one thing to get drunk. It's one thing, and it's a whole nother thing to get blacked out drunk. I cannot. I cannot. I can't. I don't even drink no more, and it's been years. But even then, even when I was drinking, um, I didn't, I wasn't drinking like, like, like that, you know. And even when I did drink, I was with people that I trusted. You're tweaking. Each time that I would go to a party, only this one specific night made me realize what the reality of college parties are. I'm saying. I got invited to a Pi Beta 5 sorority party. I don't know what that means. Now, I heard that this sorority had the worst reputation on campus, but I decided to go against my judgment because there was nothing I liked more than partying. So I ended up going. It was 7.30 when I arrived at the party and it looked lit, as I saw a lot of people there. I walked in and I saw some people that I had already met before there, and we greeted each other. The next person I saw was a girl named Gabby. I saw her at prior parties and she was always in my English class. We said hi to each other and we gave each other a hug. We talked for a little while and then she told me that she had to use the bathroom. She was gone for like five minutes. After five minutes had passed, I saw a wallet drop behind me. I turned back to see who dropped it and Gabby was right behind me. She asked if I could pick it up for her. I told her sure. Now, this was about two feet away from the couch, so I had to get up. I took a step or two, 
and I picked it up and I gave it back to her while she was still behind me. She didn't thank me, and she walked back over to the couch. We talked more for like another 20 minutes, and I kept sipping my drink or beer. All of a sudden, my vision got blurry. Oh, God. And I was it happened that fast? Damn. Yo, see, that's not the shit I'm talking about. Out about two seconds later. I woke up the next morning to see my jeans along with my underwear pulled down. Oh my God. My whole crotch was exposed. It felt very weird and it had a strong odor. My heart was racing and I assumed the worst so I called a car service to take me to the hospital. I then arrived at the hospital. I walked to the front desk and I asked if I could see a doctor. The person working at the front desk told me I could do that and I would have to wait. I then met with a doctor. I had a checkup with the doctor and what they found inside of my body would end up becoming my worst nightmare. I had been roofied and somebody had done something to me that I would never forget. The doctor found out who did it. It was none other than Gabby. I was in so much disgust that I threw up in the garbage can right next to me. And I finally remember when I got roofied. It was when I picked up her wallet. She purposely dropped it so that she can drug me and do horrible things to me when I was out cold. I called my parents and I discussed the situation I was in. They couldn't even give me any advice as they were in just as much as all as I was in. A few days had passed and I had to make a decision. I actually made two decisions. The first decision was to completely drop out of college because of the horrendous incident that occurred to me. And my second decision was to press charges against Gabby. Um, I'm not doing that. I see, I see any my education. How about you take her ass out? Take her clock ass out of college and send her to a clock school. Do her. A trial took place two weeks later. So you know what decision I made. I testified against Gabby. And she was found guilty and was later sentenced to eight years in prison. I never went back to college after this. And have since then worked a normal job from nine to five. I can't believe it happened that fast. You got goofy fast as shit. This happened back in 2009. A program has an underground parking lot attached to a lounge of our own, located behind the cafeteria. Couples liked going there because it was always empty and partially dark. I hated it because it had a back door leading to the parking lot. Yeah, I hated it because it was partially dark. And... Some clock shit was going. That's why I hit it. That was barely lit up. Barely anyone parked there, and so I found it creepy. Plus, being a horror fan, I knew that was a perfect opportunity for us, something to go wrong. Long story short, I came out of class one day, and this kid I don't know starts walking up to me almost confrontational like. I have my knife set with me, and I pull out a handle, readying to defend myself. He stops and hands me a paper. It reads, Meet me in the lounge. I look at him in confusion and ask who sent him that note. Was it my boyfriend or someone in the culinary program or maybe a friend from high school? He shakes his head and he says he doesn't know, but I should go. I question him on what this person looks like. He refuses to give me any information. I chuckle nervously. I put the note in my pocket and I walk past the kid and head to class. He starts following me, asking me if I was going to go. I try ignoring him, heading toward the library to get into the public place. He follows me. He tries telling me I should go, that it's my destiny or some crap along those lines. Destiny is crazy. I glare at him and I pick up the pace, trying to head downstairs to the cafeteria in hopes of finding a classmate and losing the kid. He runs at the same pace, telling me he doesn't understand why I'm not going. I tell him, because I don't want to go, and I go away and he heads into the cafeteria. I head into the cafeteria. By now, he's really creeping me out. I go okay, I'll go. But only one exception. Head to toe, head to toe, I need to be covered in Adidas. Can we do that? No? All right, well. <laughs> From my phone to call the police, but instead, I see a classmate and I run towards him. The kid follows me, pointing towards where the lounge is and telling me I'm going the wrong way. I instantly panic and I tell my classmate what's going on. 
he approaches the kid and tells him to leave me alone and that I have a boyfriend and I'm not interested. The kid tells me that they're waiting for me in the lounge and not to take long. His words give me chills. My classmate walks me to our student restaurant area and he asks for some others to come with us. Three of my other colleagues, they come with us to the lounge and there's no one there. I get freaked out and I decide to go home. They walk me through the campus to the parking lot where I call my parents and I get a ride. One of the others stays with me while the classmate who defended me goes to the report the behavior to our teachers who used the lounge as a secondary office sometimes. He then comes back to tell me that they're going to investigate and to keep an eye out for suspicious activity for of that kid. A few days later, I learned that a girl had been assaulted in the area, having parked there during the finals and going through the lounge. The school newspaper has reported it, but there are no details as to who did it. They had never even said if the person was caught. I literally felt my stomach drop hoping that the girl was okay and hoping that those people get caught. I reported my incident to the newspaper team, but they claimed she never dealt with anything like that or anything like a note. They never found the suspects. My mom is glad I listened to my gut and I didn't go. To this day, I still get chills thinking about it. The girl recovered, but she got jumped, but had no money, so they just left her, I guess. God damn. And she escaped with a few minor injuries. They never caught the attackers, and I never saw the strange kid again. All I can think of is why me. If they were going for money, I was so poor, I literally lived off sesame crackers donated by my classmates because I had no money. I'm just glad that the girl is okay and that I listened to my gut. Who knows what would have happened if I had gone. Watch your mother clocking back. Don't trust nobody. Focus on your grades. Focus on yourself. That's all I'm saying. Gator fires. And if you won't go out, if you won't go out, if you're gonna have a good time, at least be with somebody that you know. That's all that is. That's all I'm saying. Keep cool, keep classy, and I love you. Stay happy. My family.